What's up guys, this is Lunchbox and Towie here from Team Evil Geniuses. Slayer. We wanted to do Kill a quick to uh, map overview of Shrine here. Um, and we're going to go over all of the game types and basically just certain points that we feel are very important to be successful on this map. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is starting strats. Um, what would you say is the most important thing about starting strats, Tau? Uh, the most important thing, at least for starting strats, is to try to gain control of ring, as it's the most important position on the map, and then from gaining ring control, getting rockets, which are the most important uh, neutral power weapon to start the game. So your starting strat should revolve around pushing to get to ring 3 and having a player try to get rockets off their spawn. Yeah, so usually that's me for our team. I try and get towards ring um, and try and basically get a good vantage point to help get rockets. So uh, Snipe Down obviously gets our sniper and he provides cover fire from the back. But uh, the biggest thing off the start on this map is to grab rockets if you can. And the one thing too is if you have a set team, in my opinion, you want to make sure that everybody has kind of a set way they go so that you don't have confusion off the start. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's kind of different playing the playlist, um, which a lot of people do to try to get better as well. But if you do have a set team, it's very important that you communicate exactly who is going to be going where so that you're all on the same page about what is being covered. Um, because the best part about communication with your team is you know, knowing what your teammates see on their screens uh, by communicating with each other. And so you want to have every area of the map covered so you know where the enemy is coming from. Yeah. So if you end up getting rockets off the start, you know, you want to try and utilize them. Anytime you get rockets on this map especially, uh, you want to try and use them to get into the other team's base. And it really provides you easier rocket shots than if you're just sitting in ring and waiting for them to come. Uh, our biggest thing when we get rockets and what we talk about is to not just sit in ring two and wait for people to come to you. Because um, if you sit here, this is like, say, you know, the enemy's team enemy team's base is, is over here. Um, if you're sitting on this this wall and kind of trying to watch stuff, there's so many different ways they can come in and kill you. Uh, you know, they can come in I from jump come ups. And over here and you wouldn't even know that I was coming without a teammate watching it. The, uh, the rocket guy's really vulnerable when he's sitting there trying to cover multiple angles all at the same time. So the last thing you want to do when you have rockets is to die with rockets still left. It's your responsibility to try to use them all. And just sitting ring three waiting for guys to come from multiple angles is, is not a very high percentage play. Yeah, so I, I, I always think it's better to try and push into the enemy team's base. Um, it usually gives you easier rockets, especially if you can get into the other team's hut, which is one of the power positions we're going to talk about. Um, the enemy team's hut is one of the best positions in the game, and that's what you'll hear a lot of the pro teams and scrims and whatnot uh, kind of focus on with their communication and saying that we need to get guys into their hut. And the reason being is, uh, one, it blocks spawns, so you're going to be forcing the enemy team to spawn over the rocks, which gives you a good vantage point um, to shoot them off their spawn and kind of trap them there. And as well as, this is where the enemy team sniper spawns right here. Um, so, you, you know, you have control of their power weapon in their base. Um, and those are just two of many reasons, really, that hut is a, a good place to be. And we would like to think of it as kind of like a a middle point where you know you get hut control and then you keep pushing to try and get into the yeah, other it's flag it's a mode. process i was going to say it, it's dependent on the game type that you're playing uh, but specifically for objective games gaining control of their hut is pretty critical to trying to achieve the objective because as you can see right now if i'm spawning rocks i'm extremely wide open to everyone on this side of the map people poking out from ring two or ring three and I'm trying to shoot this guy that's over here in the hut or on Pink Street and or C Street, and he has so much cover to be able to run away or do anything he wants to stay alive. And all these guys spawning rocks trying to push back to their flag are just left open and aren't able to really push anywhere. You know, they have to try to go backwards in order to go forwards and clean that guy out of their hut. So if you can stay alive in their hut and then try to push from there with your teammates to get to the objective, uh, it's usually the best way to go. Yeah, that's another reason too is. You know, if you stay alive in the in the other team's hut, they literally have to push you all the way across the map to their spawning rocks to kill you because there's no way they can kill you unless they push all the way to their hut to clear you out. You know, it's almost impossible to get good nades or kill the guy if he's trying to stay alive. So um, you're a huge distraction if, if nothing else, even if you don't get any kills. But 
So hut is one of the biggest power positions, and most people know that ring three is probably <coughs> one of the most important power positions other than hut. Um, you have huge advantages with height, um, and you can see pretty much the entire map in terms of where the enemy team is spawning. If they spawn rocks, you have a perfect uh, angle. If they spawn flag under turret or in courtyard, um, no matter what, you can get an angle from ring three, which is yeah. you know impossible to do from any other spot on the map. Yeah, even regardless of whether or not you're able to get shots down on the spawners, just locating where the other team is on the map so that your team knows, it opens up so much more space for you to move around. Uh, by having a guy ring three that can relay that information, regardless of whether or not he's able to even put them weak, um, yeah. it, just frees, it frees up everything for, for your team. Yeah, shots, shots are nice, but they're definitely, you know, finding out where they're spawning is just as important because uh, there are times where they might get that random courtyard spawn or something that could, uh, you know, ultimately stop your push from happening. So, uh, you know, being able to spot that early is very important so they don't get a sneaker out. Um, you know, some players are known for getting out of their base, and if you get guys ring three in, in good positions in their hut, you know, it's very hard for the other team to do that. Um, and that's that brings me to my next point. So if you are on the unfortunate side of not having ring or hut control, and you're one of the guys um, spawning in rocks, and they have guys ring three, Tau go ring three. Yeah. Uh, if you know if we're if, if I'm on the team that's getting spawn trap, there's a few key points that I wanted to go over to get out of the spawn trap. I feel like our team is pretty darn good at it, uh, getting out of spawn traps. When we kind of get ourselves in the sticky situations, we usually uh, have kind of set things that we try and focus on that help us get out of spawn traps, which is not easy to do against pro teams who are probably have snipers and uh, have guys ring three in, in our hut. So. One of the biggest things is when you spawn, if you're the first guy or two up to spawn, you don't want to get shots shot from your hut. If you can block at least one angle, um, I think that's really important, especially if there's a guy ring three. You know, try to fight this guy and make him fall off of ring three so when your teammates are spawning up behind you, they're not immediately getting shot. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's all about using cover. That can be said for a lot of different spots on the map, too. But especially when you're spawning, trying to eliminate one of the angles that could be shooting you if you're getting double teamed uh, just increases your chances of everything you can do. Yeah, I mean, for example, if I, you know, I can put the same shots into the guy ring three, but put myself in a bad position like out here where I can get shot from, you know, snipe spawn or our flag, whereas if I put myself in this position here, there's no way I can get shot from the left and I can fight this guy off and try and get him off the power position while still being, you know, this isn't an even 1v1, but it's certainly better than getting double teamed and trying to fight that guy off ring three. So sure. uh, I think that's really important. The first guys up need to eliminate angles and try and get shots into the power positions. If there's a guy in your carbine, you and your teammate that spawn up first can try and melt him real quick. Just get two shots into him each and, you know, get lucky and kill him or just make him drop down into the other team's courtyard and get him off of that position. Um, your goal is, as the first guy spawning is to try and alleviate some of the pressure that your teammates spawning behind yeah. you are going to get, so they can get out, hopefully, or get back to flag. Yeah, I was going to say, this is mostly all geared towards objective games uh, so far, and Halo itself is really situational. Like, in every situation um, is never going to be the exact same. So sometimes you'll have, you know, just one teammate near you, or one teammate that'll be back towards flag, or you'll have maybe one of you got out towards the jump up um, and you're able to kill a guy and you're still spawning rocks, but in certain situations it might be more beneficial to try to push out and, you know, regain map control and possibly then come back and kill the guys at your base through ring and through your street or maybe working together with the guys that are going to be spawning in your rocks that can stay alive and then push through your flag. So it totally depends on the situation what is best to do, um, but staying alive and, you know, if you're the first one up, making sure that you work with your teammates that are spawning and don't just jump out and die is, is really important because you spawning on your own at first is just you're you know you're out in the open uh, while the other team is looking and waiting for you to spawn to get another easy free kill so you want to make sure to not give that up yeah it's very dependent on spawns if you get a good spawn like Tawi said you know if you can get if you can flank out and not get seen or get shot at that's that's the best case scenario, but the majority of the time you get these back rock spawns or, uh, you know, a good amount of the time. So I'm talking more worst case scenario. If you're getting these back rock sure. spawns, your teammates aren't spawned yet, you're the first guy up. Uh, yeah, just try and get the guys that you can off the power positions and elite, uh, eliminate angles. This and is it, also specific for objective games, so you should uh, go over a little bit more for Slayer 
Um, yeah. Since Slayer Slayer is really more um, random based spawn, since you can kind of spawn all over the map. Um, so it's not like you're necessarily going to be pinned in one corner, and you know the other team isn't going to always know where you're going to spawn if they can set up. Whereas objective games, if you're set up properly, you know where they're going to be spawning. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with with Slayer on uh, Shrine is to try and make sure that you're controlling one of the bases. Um, the the times that I feel like our team our team struggles the most on Shrine Slayer is when we are playing it hectic and we don't have a base because those are the times that you know you get a kill and an enemy spawns behind you every single time it, it feels like so if you can have a guy that sits on flag or even in hut and is just watching the rock spawn every time you get a kill or a couple kills um, that, that way you can either spawn kill these guys when they spawn or you can decide to push the other two guys at the opposite base and get a couple kills just finish Finish the last two guys at the opposite base and push, and then you basically switch bases and then you control this base. But you can't just sit in the middle of the map like in Ring or Ring 3 uh, and have them spawning at both bases or have guys at both bases on the enemy team. Because that's when you get into trouble and getting getting sandwiched and you're getting pushed from multiple angles and that almost never works out well uh, for your team if you're getting pushed from both, both bases at the same time. So biggest thing on Slayer is obviously controlling power weapons is always going to be important on Slayer since it's you know based on kills and power weapons make that easier but uh, other than power weapons I think trying to control a base um, as best you can or at least watching spawns uh, you know knowing that yeah. there's a good chance that the enemy team is going to spawn at the base you're at if you're not blocking everything you know if you don't have a guy yep. in rocks on flag and in hut there's a good which you probably never will there's a good chance they can spawn at your base so just watching spawns when you get killed is very important on Shrine Slayer. Any map, yeah, really, but. it's um, it's a, it applies to objective games as well. But you you know, ring is obviously the most important position to have on the map. But it's a little counterintuitive because I see a lot of times that players in the playlist at least will just flood into ring, and you know, ring is bad if you don't have ring control on ring three and you have other players on your team that are pushing forward or working together because you have no angles you're you're stuck in ring and you can you know be flanked or pushed on from so many other different angles that you rely on communication and your teammates line of sight a lot more than you need to especially when you have multiple guys in ring it just leads to funneling and staying in there too long and usually getting too weak to help and then dying so specifically on slayer it is very useful to have obviously but you want to make sure you have lines of sight that are open um working with your teammates around around ring while trying to control ring three. You don't want to just sit in ring um, and try to poke out or, you know, sit ring two or sit on one of the walls. You know, sitting in ring is, is not necessarily a good thing to do. Now, and for an example is like a lot of people will go into ring and then they'll come here to try and look at rock spawns. A, this is an easy nade for the enemy team to throw. Very uh, easy, you know, yeah. Make it off this wall. So this is not a very good spot, and you'll see pro players do this all the time. And mainly, it's because they're trying to get to watch that spawn as quickly as they can, because they know that somebody's going to be spawning up around there. Um, yep. But if you can get ring three, or even out on carbine, you know, you can see so much more. This is a little more vulnerable of a spot, yeah. but so you have to be ready to drop down immediately into courtyard if you start getting a lot of heavy fire. But you know, getting ring three or getting out here gives you such a better angle than it's just so much just more beneficial example, than just yeah, coming yeah, I mean, here. You can't it, see it anything. It takes five to here. ten seconds to move out of that position, and it may seem like it's a waste of time if you're already here looking for players. But for you to back up and take the extra time to get a better angle to be able to move around more freely throughout ring, um, either on ring three or <clears throat> on the carbine or dropping down, it's just it's just better. You don't want to ever have to sit in ring uh, for extended periods of time, for sure. Yeah. You know, the, you should always have a goal of getting, uh, on objective games, game times especially, always have a goal of getting into the other team's base because ultimately you have to get into their base to complete the objective, whether it's bomb or flag. Um, so, kind of ring is just kind of like a, a midway point of your push. You know, you stop here for a second and kind of get a get the yeah, situation report and see where the enemy team might be at. And as soon as you think you have an opening. Uh, you know, you should almost always try and take it um, to try and get into the other team's base. And even if you di end up dying, as long as you distract the enemy team and allow your teammates to clean up some kills or push in with you, um, it can be it can be worth it, even if you don't stay alive. Do you have any uh, any kind of jumps that you use at least more often than not that a lot of players might not know, or at least 
specific nades. Those that are the ones that I do, or probably everybody knows about, but this is the one that uh, I'll do quite a bit, is jumping on the outside of combo, because it eliminates quite a few angles. Yeah, um, if you watch a lot of streams, you probably see a lot of pro players do that. It, it takes away the angle of the, peop the players that are in ring um, on the opponent's team from seeing you, so you can get uh, through, and it allows you to not be sniped if they're watching the street um, from the other side of the map. You also probably see players boost each other up um, the bond all the way up to ring three, which is incredibly useful. Uh, one for surprising. Yeah, attack and them down here. Yeah, I'm over here. So yeah, yeah, see, I can I can jump you up. It's it's really useful to avoid the enemy sniper, uh, to have a teammate jump you up there, and to get better angles and locate the players that are in ring, um, and they won't know that you're coming. So you see pro teams do that very very often now. Yeah. So this is only at this base that you can do this at, uh, which I believe is red base, where you can jump up from under turret to top turret. Um, you know that that comes in handy, I guess probably more often than not if you're if you're weak and you can jump up there and kind of use that as a juke move. But uh, yeah, those are the main jumps. The one from snipe spawn to combo on the outside of it. The one you can do it from ring one to ring <coughs> to ring three with a teammate's help. Um, and at red base you can jump from under turret to top turret, so those are the main jumps. Other than that, you know, if you know how to spring jump, you can do other ones, but I think those are not nearly as important, so. Yeah, yeah, I think that pretty much uh, covers mostly everything. I would say if you're trying to get better, uh, specifically, the most important thing you can do um, when searching the playlist, either alone or with teammates, is just to work on your communication and work on your pushing together. Um, obviously, for objective games, it helps to be aggressive, but being aggressive with your teammates appropriately and getting into those power positions that we talked about, like on ring three, and trying to get to their hut, and then from their hut, getting to their flag for either bomb or for capture the flag, is what's most important. And you want to communicate with your teammates um, exactly what you're doing to be able to do it together. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point. And obviously, a lot of times in playlists, you'll run into the you know getting the teammates on your team that are kind of lost causes and or maybe they just never played the game before. But um, there's also a lot of times that you get teammates that you know can do much better if they get good communication and good call out. So um, you know if you can give them good information and, and whatnot, it could not only help make you play better, but help make your teammates play better, which is obviously really important as well. So. Yeah, absolutely, I would agree. I think that's that's all we got, though. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, we're going to be coming out with more videos in the near future, so uh, make sure you subscribe to the uh, Evil Genius Twitter, as well as my Twitter, which is at EG Lunchbox. And, and uh, at Ryan Towie. At Ryan Towie, yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.